Hi everyone. So welcome to the live stream today. Really excited for having you on the stream today as we really begin our journey for the November 2023 examination. What I want to do today is to share with you the key there are three key things that you need to really look at and take into consideration to position you to pass the examination. I'm going to talk about three things, how you can study effectively, how you can retain a lot of the things that you study memory, and how you can work on your timing. One of the things that you need to understand is that these are the three things that will make you either pass the exam or fail the exam. How you study, how you memorize what you study, and retain a lot of the things you study, and most importantly, how you work on your timing. A lot of people are going to fail the exam or have failed the exam in the past, not necessarily because they did not know, not necessarily because they had they didn't have the capacity to pass the examination, but because they did not learn well or did not study well. Or sometimes it could be that they did not really understand how to retain a lot of the things that they have studied. And then number three, how to work on their timing. So that is what I want to share with you on the stream today and i see some of you guys joining you are welcome give us a thumbs up on the video when you join it helps us a lot make sure you share the video also let's reach as many students as possible watching the stream we are live on facebook we are live on youtube as well and i think also i think we are also live on linkedin so any questions you put in the comment section for me or the chat box i'm going to be taking your questions and also providing you with some idea generally so let's go straight into my presentation in the next few minutes and let's see what we can do so how do you pass the examination couple of things i want you to understand three things you need to know how to study number one number two you need to know how to retain a lot of the things that you have you are going to be studying then number three you need to work on your timing if you are going to fail the exam these are the three things that will either make or break you and in my presentation today I want to really provide you with the blueprints that you need in order for you to pass the examination because in my opinion you should be able to pass this exam at one sitting it shouldn't take you that long to be able to finish this up at the end of the day so let's take it one after the other studying studying is the beginning of the whole journey because you are going to be writing an exam so at the end of the day you need to be able to study but in order for you to study, there are a couple of key issues that you need to know about to increase your effectiveness as you study. The first thing that I want you to be mindful of is going to be the fact that you need to really work on your environment. You see, st your environment is very crucial and that increases your ability to be able to study productively or not. Now, primarily, what I mean here by this particular masterclass that I'm doing here is you studying on your own. I'm not talking about really just what you do when you attend lectures or whatever, but this is what you're going to be doing on your own in the next 12 or 13 weeks to position yourself to pass the examination. So the first thing is to work on your environment. It is important that you learn or you study in a serene focus and zero distraction environment some of you it's funny because sometimes you are like oh i'm gonna study then you lie on your bed then you pick the book then you are looking at it before you know boom you are asleep you cannot be studying on your bed that is a wrong environment to study so you need to have a steady table you need to have a steady place that you you are going to be sitting to study another thing about the environment has to do with the fact that you cannot also be studying whilst there is noise in your background the tv is on or people are doing some things you cannot in other words in order to increase your productivity level in order to help you to really study effectively you must have a serene focus and zero destructive or destruction environment that's the first thing. The second thing is going to be your learning style. Now, there are everybody learns in different ways. And so there are a couple of learning styles that are available that you must know about. And you must know where you fit and the combination that you can have of each of these in order to position you to really be productive in everything that you are doing. So there are people who learn through visual means what does that mean it means they use charts they use graphs they use graphic organizers they use 
outlines, they use picture aids, they use PowerPoints. That is the first thing. Some people learn through the auditory approach. What does that mean? It means they learn by hearing. So visual people learn by seeing. So once they see it, they can assimilate it, they can study it, they can memorize it. Others study by hearing so that is reading aloud so what does that mean it means that sometimes you read aloud so there are some people who cannot sit down and study just on their own what does that mean it means that they read aloud and when you can't sit by them and study and sometimes you'll be like oh keep quiet kofi uh, can't you study on your own no that is how they can study so if that is your style go for it but what it means is that technically you have to be by yourself most of the time you cannot do group studies because as you are reading aloud you are disturbing somebody then listening centers uh discussions so some people do well with discussion and so this is where group comes in so there are some of you the way you'll be effective to be able to study generally is if you are able to actually have other people around you
Okay, sorry, I had to take a short break. And uh, let's continue quickly. Uh, I believe that we still got some people on the stream. <laughs> that was an unusual break for me. Let's go. Okay, so I think I'm back now. All right, so there are people who learn through the auditory approach. That is, they learn by listening. So I was saying that some people will do well in group discussions or team discussions. So that is how they excel. That is how they're able to remember. That is how they're able to understand what they are learning at the end of the day. So if that is you, that means that you have to, you know, find a friend. Look for somebody and then form a group meeting with them. If they are also like that, it helps you as you teach each other, as you discuss the thing, it sticks better. Find out if that is who you are, use it to your advantage. Next one is read by write, read and write. So this is where, you know, you learn by reading and writing. So if you read one page, you, uh, you should be able to write it out three pages, you write it out. And you'll be doing that on a gr gradually, gradually to increase your chances of really understanding what you're doing. And then kinesthetic approach. This is learning by doing. So really this will come in in the context of the issue in relation to where you are looking at things like, you know, solving questions, practicing a lot of questions. So after you learn the principles, approach questions. You learn the principles, approach questions. That is kinesthetic. Now, this will really work for a lot of hands-on or practical skills rather than just like doing IC or studying for the IC examination. Nonetheless, these are the studying style that is that are generally available. So you need to find out which of these four are you. Sometimes it's a combination of them. There are certain things you have to learn them through, you know, group discussions, learn them by, you know, discussing it with somebody or reading them aloud. There are certain things you need to look at the diagrams, look at the pictures, put them in that manner, find out what works best for you. So if you pay attention carefully to all my lectures, you realize that I try to put all of these things when I'm teaching. So realize that when I'm teaching a lot, when I'm teaching, I like to use a lot of diagrams, a lot of charts, because so that someone who learns by visualization will have that mental image in their mind and then boom, will go away. Then sometimes when I'm teaching, I ask a question, then I expect people to bring to answer and then we have a discussion that is for somebody who learns and gets the information by some discussion, by teamwork then I, I work for that person as well. Then there are certain things I repeat it as I'm teaching it. So although I'm teaching it, you realize that I will still go back to it, talk about it again, talk about it again. That is to help somebody who picks information, not at the first attempt, but at the second or at the third attempt. So that is why sometimes I would have to repeat something like two times or three times. It's not that I've forgotten. It is because some people, that's how they study. So if you follow me closely, you realize that when I'm lecturing, that I, I try to demonstrate all of these things because we have a diverse array of individuals and you should be able to touch on them. But you have to find out what your studying style is and leverage on that if you really want to understand what you're doing well. Number three, understudying is going to be note taking. You cannot be studying without taking notes. This is very crucial. It's very important. So you have to take notes. Because note taking makes you active whilst you are studying. It makes you active. So you're not just listening. You're not just watching. You are not just, you know, sitting down like that. No, you are taking notes. You are jotting down key things. That tells your brain that what you are listening, it's important. So let's keep it at somewhere that it can be recollected. I've had people, I mean, those times that we were having a lot of on-campus lectures. I mean, I've had people sit in my class and I'm talking for three hours and they will never take any notes. And you're like, wow, is this a goddess of wisdom or goddess of memory? Then this same people, this same person or this same group of people, you put, you give an assignment and Zokpo. Performance evaluation test, Zokpo. And you're like, ah, so why didn't you take notes? 
so it's important. I cannot overemphasize the importance of note taking when studying. I cannot e- emphasize the importance of it that much. So you have to take a lot of notes. You have to take a lot of notes. Next one. Whilst you are studying, you need to break your studies up into 25 minute cycle and take a break. And that is what we call the application of the Pomodoro technique. Okay, so break your learning cycle into 25 minutes. 25 minutes because your brain will be active for so long. By 25 minutes, you are off when you are studying. So you get up, walk around, sip some water rest a little bit just for five minutes then you come back do another 25 minutes again you do that you do that at a reasonable interval that is what we call the pomodoro technique breaking your learning cycle to 25 minutes and then after that you take a break so don't say hey i'm learning for two hours then you sit behind a book two hours you are learning, you are learning. No, my, my, my brother, my sister, uh, you're just wasting time. Okay. You are just wasting your time. So break it down into 25 minutes. Number five, am I numbering? Well, one, two, three, four, five. The fifth thing here is that you should do what we call the repeated steady approach. You see, as you steady and move forward. So now we are in week one, by the time we get to week six, week seven, it's likely that you have even forgotten the things we did in week one, the things we did in week two. So in order to really increase your chances of understanding, you must do repeated studies of the same thing at reasonable intervals. Reasonable intervals. It means that when you study something today and you feel you understand it, you're able to recollect it tomorrow, then you're like, okay, yeah, this thing, I understand it. But after one week, after two weeks, if you are, we give you a book and uh, a pen that write out that same thing again, you're going to struggle. So in order to let your memory understand, let your brain knows that, know that this thing is important, you need to practice repeated study at reasonable intervals. And you know yourself. So maybe you studied something today, you understood it. Tomorrow morning, you're able to recollect about 80% of them. That's okay. A week from now, try to see. Five days from now, try to see. Coming back to this. So you realize that studying actually requires significant amount of time so that you can really understand what you are studying. But repeated study at reasonable intervals tells your brain that this information is important. Let's keep it somewhere that it can be recollected at the time that is needed. Then the third thing that I want you to understand about studying is discipline. Listen to me. Discipline simply means that having a steady plan and keeping to it, irrespective of what happens. You see, you you cannot postpone this. You cannot procrastinate this. Maybe you are studying. Then all of a sudden you went to work and your friend tells you that, oh, a favorite movie, a series that you have been watching, a new season has just launched. Or a certain movie which... uh, that you have been waiting for. You watch the trailer and you fell in love with the movie and you are waiting for it and then boom, it has been released on Netflix, on Amazon Prime or on Apple TV Plus, whatever it is. Boom. Then you're like, oh, Charlie, Charlie, we will study tomorrow. No. Discipline means discipline. If it is today, you have a certain subject, steady, stay with it, cancel that appointment. The movie, you can watch it. The movie is not going anywhere. There are thousands of movies on Netflix, on Amazon Prime, on Apple TV Plus, and other platforms that you cannot watch enough. But in in the next few weeks for the November 2023 examination, you need to discipline yourself and tell yourself that, hey, listen, I'm going to cut certain things out because you need to sacrifice. And that requires discipline. I cannot come and whip you up. Nobody can do that for you. You have to know it. So that is the first thing you need to understand. Studying will help you to pass the exam. Make sure you study in a conducive environment. Make sure you know your studying style. Is it audible? Is it auditory? Sorry. Is it visual? Is it read and write or kinesthetic? Find out what works best for you. Right. Then take notes. Never attend lectures. Never study without actively taking notes. 
you have to take notes. Unless otherwise you are driving or you are at a place that you cannot take notes, you have to be taking notes consciously of it. Then repeated study at reasonable intervals. And most importantly, you need to discipline yourself. That is the first thing you must understand to pass your examination. The second thing that is closely knitted together is your memory. You see, <laughs> you can study all you could, but if you can't retain a lot of the things that you study, then you are in trouble. So your memory is key. So the question we then ask ourselves is, hey, how do we study and retain a lot of the things that we study so that when it is time for assignments, performance evaluation test, mock examination, and the ultimate exam, you'll be able to really call it up as it is needed. How do you retain a lot of the information? There are a couple of strategies available that you can use, that you can implement in order to help you to retain a lot of the information that you have studied. This is one key thing I want you to understand. Your ability to remember what you have studied depends largely on your emotions at, at the time that you are learning. Why? Because emotions plus information emotion plus information equals long-term memory that's it emotion plus information equals long-term memory this is the equation so that is why you hear me saying all the time that hey you cannot be thinking about the bills and pick a book to study you cannot be thinking about your wife, your husband, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, uh, something, and, you know, pick a book and say you are studying. No, you are wasting time. Okay, that time if you watch a, a nice movie, that would have been more productive. That time if you had freshened up and slept, that would have been better. So your emotion plus the information will give you long-term memory. So the question we then ask ourselves is, how do you really have the right emotion? This day and age, the economy is bombarding everybody everywhere. So you need to create your emotion because sometimes you are just walking in town and somebody is angry because of 20 pesos. Somebody is angry because of one CD. Somebody is fighting with a mate because of 20 pesos or 50 pesos. So like people are angry walking around. But you need to have a sane mind when you are studying. So your emotion is very important. Now, to increase your ability to really remember what you are studying, you're going to be using what we call the fast strategy. You must learn study fast so that you can remember what you study. It's a NIMOC. F there means forget. What does that mean? Forget everything you know about the subject. This especially goes to people who, you know, you have some knowledge. Maybe you have written the paper twice already and this is your third time you are writing it. Or you wrote it once and you are doing a resetting. Or you are doing a reset. Or maybe you did something like that in your master's, your MBA, your whatever the heck, or in the first degree. So when the lecturer is teaching now, you feel like you're a baron. You feel like you're a big boy. You feel like you're a big girl. So you're like, oh, this thing cry, I know it. You see, when you do that, you are no more curious. When you do that, you are telling your brain that this information is not needed. So you will not be active. So the first thing you want to do is forget about it. Be like a child. Be curious. Let your mind be looking out for. You see, there are, there are places I go, meetings I attend, seminars that I listen to. Everything the person is talking about, everything the speaker is talking about, I have read it. I know about it, but you will see me taking notes like crazy. Why? Because although what's the subject I know about it, the topic I know about it, the person will bring out something that would deepen my understanding, something that would deepen my knowledge, something that I didn't really know and a perspective of the subject or the topic that I knew nothing about up until that point. So forget about everything you know about the subject. Be like a child. Be very curious about it. And then go ahead. Number two, be active. This is what I, I mentioned earlier about note taking. You need to participate fully in the studying that you are doing. Be active. Be active. Because as you are there, you are taking notes. Then you are asking questions. There are some of you, you will never ask any question throughout your class. 
Never ask any question. But you, you don't understand. It's not everything you understand, but you won't ask questions because number one, probably you're not listening attentively or number two, you are shy of asking questions. I don't know why you should be shy of asking questions if you have paid the same school fees than like everybody has, has paid. Oh, Shira, you know, I feel that when I ask questions, I'll be drawing the class back. But somebody is asking questions. You there, you won't ask your own. So you need to be active. Participate. What If you are studying on your own, the same thing. Be taking notes and then you'll be asking yourself, how would that exam be? What questions can the examiner ask about this? Okay, how do I apply this in practice? That is being active. Then S has to be your state. Your state. You see, some of you, when you are studying, the way you sit alone tells your brain that you are not serious. The way you sit, you sit like you sit by a, like no information, no calculation, no consciousness, like you just sit anyhow. That tells your brain that you're not serious. That tells your brain that you're just having fun. And your brain, that is how it is. Once your brain knows you're having fun, your brain will just be having fun with you. So you, you have to be in a studying state. You have to be in a studying state. Sit upright at your desk. You are studying. You are active. You are having a right emotion. So your state is very important. Then the T here is teach. Steady as though you are going to teach somebody. Steady as though you are going to tell someone about it. Now, for 99.9% .9 of you, you will never teach anyone what you are studying. But it is a mental knowledge that you're going to have. You're going to trick your brain. You're going to trick your brain. You trick your brain that, hey, listen, I'm going to teach this. Teach this to who? No, maybe a colleague. Imagine after the class, a colleague sends you a test and say, oh, please, can you help me with the explanation of this? Or you are doing a team discussion, a group discussion. Then you are asked, oh, can you talk about this? Imagine the embarrassment that you're going to have. So that feeling can tell your brain that, hey, you know, this information is important, guys. L let's keep it at a place where we can call on it when it is needed. I hope you are getting it. So steady as though you're going to teach it. That helps you to really participate. That helps you to take key notes. That helps you to really question what you are studying and know the way what you are studying actually applies in the context of the subject and the whole scheme of work at the end of the day. So you want to increase your memory. You want to retain a lot of information, number one. Forget about what you are studying. Forget about anything, you know. Be like a child. Be very curious about it. Number two, be active. Participate in everything. Take note. Ask questions. Number three, have a right state of mind. Your emotion is very crucial. Sit upright. Don't just sit sluggish. Let your brain know that you are in serious business. Okay, don't just, don't just, don't just st like sit down by heart. You know, I, 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 I'm just looking for some words for that. But don't just sit down by heart. Okay? That's why I say you can't study on your bed. Because you study on your bed, then you, you just, you know, slouch behind like that. And you put your pillow behind you. Then you're like, yeah, I'm studying. What are you doing? Your brain is like, oh, what kind of fooling is this? We are not learning. We are having fun, mommy. <laughs> so have a good state and then study as though. You're going to teach it. That is very important for you to retain a lot of information. So number one, you got to commit to study. And these are the things, six things. Having a, having a good environment, knowing your studying style, taking notes, applying the Pomodoro technique, have a repeated study at reasonable intervals, and most importantly, discipline yourself. But to increase your memory, you need to have Attach emotions to what you are studying. Listen to me. ICA is not difficult. IFRSs are not difficult. Public sector is not difficult. Management accounting is not difficult. Imagine when you become a chartered accountant, how you will feel. That emotion, let it be guiding you. Some of you are afraid of certain subjects. Fear is a good thing. Turn it to fuel to empower you. If you're afraid of failing the exam, then steady hard so that you won't fail it. But don't let the fear cripple you. Don't let the fear cripple you. 
Let the fear become a fuel that's then, and, and, and it's an emo emotion. And the emotion we are talking about here is not just positive inform emotion. It could be a negative emotion, like fear. Fear on, on the face value, it's seen as a negative emotion. But if you're afraid of failing the exam, what do you do? Steady to pass the exam. That's it. So have a positive emotion. Then the third thing then generally is going to be timing. Timing is going to be important. So like I said earlier, people fail the examination because maybe they didn't study well. Number two, they are not able to remember what they studied very well. Number three, they have poor timing. Time is everything. When I'm talking about timing, number one, know your peak time. Your peak time is where you are the best of yourself. You cannot work in the morning, start, be stuck in traffic, get home around 10 p.m., be exhausted, eat banku and okra stew at 10 p.m., and open, after that, open a book and study. No, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? That's, that's a wrong time to study. You've worked all day, tired, reach home, eat banku and okra stew at 10 p.m., or banku and tilapia at 10 p.m., then you pick a book to study. Who are you deceiving? What are you smoking? Then you get up in the morning and you wonder why you don't remember anything you studied. You didn't even study because you dozed off along the line. So know your peak time. This is where you are of your best. And like I said earlier, in this day and age, you would have to be conscious of creating your own peak time. If not, life is going to screw you up because the, the environment, the society, the economy... It's giving everybody some unnecessary pressures. It's giving everybody unnecessary pressures. So know your peak time. That is very important. Number two, you practice questions under time. Practice questions under time. You see, this is to stimulate your brain to really recollect information under time. So you are telling your brain that, hey, we, we have to be urgent. Because you see, sometimes I tell people this, and you know this, most of you, if we give you the questions that you solve in the exam hall, and we gave you seven hours, you could answer everything. But in the exam hall, your brain is a little bit freeze. You are not able to recollect the information. By the time you even recollect the information, the time is over. So to position you to pass the examination, you need to practice questions under time. And that is one thing that our online study portal has. Our live questions, which I discussed with you yesterday during our orientation session, where we have live questions there under time. And if you're not able to work within the time, you lose it, the, the, the system skips to the next question. And that is to create agency in your brain to force you to remind, to be, to remi to remember the thing and recollect the information as fast as possible. Because that is what you need. That is what you need. And then, number three, you practice time allocation. Because in the exam hall, now, you practice time allocation during the times of doing assignments, during the times of doing performance evaluation tests, and during the mock. Because time allocation is how much time you are going to be giving, apportioning to each of the questions in the exam hall. But before you get to the exam hall, when you're doing assignments, work it under time. Performance evaluation test or quizzes, work it under time. Mock, work it under time. So that by the time you get to the exam hall, you know how to allocate time. Your brain understands the agency. And so the, the information can come as fast as possible. These are the three things that you need to understand if you want to pass the exam. You have to study. But you need to be able to optimize your brain in such a manner that you'll be able to retain a lot of the things that you study. But most importantly, you need to work on your time. Time is very important. And that is going to be a key de determining factor as to whether you're going to fail the exam or you're going to pass the exam. Let me give you a bonus. Let me give you a bonus. The bonus here is about, you know, music. The role of music. This is not going to apply to everybody, but let me talk about it anyways. Music plays a key role when it comes to memory and research have, there are a couple of researches that have shown the 
the role that music plays in increasing your memory and your cognitive activeness. And there are a couple of or types of musics that are available. And I know there are some of you, you study with music. So you have to be mindful of the kind of music. Number one, it's going to be classical music. Okay, this one is called the mosaic effect. Sorry, the Mozart effect. What does that mean? It means that listening to classical music actually enhances your brain activity. And it acts as a catalyst to improve your general health and well-being. So listening to classical music can help you and enhance your brain activity. That's one thing. Number two, nature music. When we say nature music, we are talking about, you know, the wave of the sea, the birds, like nature, listening to them. Now, this also enhances your cognitive functions and concentration. So instead of having some unnecessary noise in the background, having uh, a nature sound like the, the sound of the waves, I mean the sea waves in the background, it calms your nerves and it helps you to focus a lot. Okay, but generally, any music that has between 80, so music with 50 to 80 beats per second, any music with 80 to 50 bits, beats, sorry, per, per minute, music with 50 to 80 bits per minute has proven under research that it increases your brain activity. Now, what does that mean? It means that it's not really about the type of music, but it is the tempo of the music. So it could be a gospel music. It could be a hip life music. It could be, it could be a high life music. It could be a hip hop music. It could be whatever the heck music. It's about the tempo. So any music that has between 50 to 80 bits per minute it's going to stimulate your brain and helps you to understand. So for those of you who, you know, are interested in music stuff and that, uh, this is the role of music when it comes to your ability to be able to actually understand what is going on. So this is what you must understand when it comes to dealing with the issue about... Give me a sec. When it comes to the issue about how you actually position yourself to pass the examination, any questions for me? I'm seeing a couple of questions coming up. Let's see. What do we have? Jeremy said, good evening, Shira. Good evening, Jeremy. Uh, it's always nice to be here. Definitely. Abigail Owusuwa Hagen said, hi. Hello, Abigail. Abigail. Um, what do we have here? Yak Seidu said, uh, watching from Kano, Nigeria. Thank you for joining us. Um, Abigail said, very insightful. Thank you, Abigail. Uh, what's that? Jefat said, following. That's great to hear. What else we have here? Laurentia said, hi, I'm watching from South Africa. I just discovered your videos a few days ago and they have been so helpful. That's great to hear. Make sure you share the good news with your friends so that we can get a lot of people coming up. Abigail Owusuwa said, okay, so on emotions, sometimes the tutors teaching the subject make it difficult to understand or uninteresting. How do you work about that? <laughs> oh, goodness. So it depends on the teacher's approach. So... Then, you so, you know, this is what I would say. Make it interesting by your own self. Find alternative materials that can help you to make the subject interesting for you. Are you getting it? Because that is what the lecturer is doing. That is what the teacher is doing. And you can't do anything about it. So your alternative will be that you find other materials. And this day and age on YouTube... I think there are a lot of videos on various things that you, you want to get. So maybe the lecturer is teaching it. You don't get it so well. Look for other materials. Come on YouTube. Search on YouTube. You will find someone else doing the same thing or teaching it that will be better understood. Or read some articles about it. 
as you do it, it will really make you love it and make it more interesting for you. Because, you know, teaching is an act that, you know, not everybody has it. And then there are sometimes certain topics are a little bit challenging. And so the lecturer will try his best or her best to present it in a manner that he or she thinks you will understand. But it's not interesting. You're not understanding. So you have to look for alternative way to get materials. Abigail, I, I believe that will be the way to go if you want to actually solve that issue on the emotional things. So Abigail, that would be my recommendation for you. Let me know if that is helpful. Any other questions for me, please put it in the chat or the comment session for me. Want to hear from you. Mohammed said, um, monitoring from Liberia. Okay, oh, you are monitoring us, right? That's that's nice. Thanks for joining us. God great. God great said, I came late, but it's always great following you from Togo here. Okay. That's great to hear. Thanks for joining us from Togo. All right. So that is it basically about that. And that's what I want you to really understand. So three things I want you to take. You got to study. You want to work on your emotions because your state of mind will increase your memory well. And number three, you want to work on your timing. These are the three things that will make you to either pass the examination or fail the exam. That's all. That's all. Okay? That's all. Yeah, I mean, for our spiritual gurus, I mean, yeah, praying, fasting, all of that is important. But aside that, when you finish with all that, we need to come back to practical. So study, work on your memory, and, you know, work on your timing. That's that's very important. The most important thing I want you to really take away is your emotions. Okay? It's your emotions. Sometimes people wonder why I'm able to do what I do generally. And somebody was asking me recently, like, how are you able to, I mean, publish 19 books and teach all of these subjects more or less like flawlessly? And I'm like, yeah, because that's what I can do. I can't be in the military. I can't be in the army. I can't walk on the street. That's all I can do. I realize that all I can do is to study and then teach it. So what do I do? I study. So the fear of, you know, being on the street, the fear of not amounting to anything in life, the fear of, you know, failing to live my dreams, failing to live the lifestyle that I want, fuels me to study more, become more excellent and really be able to deliver the way that I deliver. So that is why I said your emotions is very important. That should fuel you. No matter whatever it is, if it is positive, negative, whatever it is, let it fuel you. Whatever you fear about, whatever you fear, let it fuel your desire. Let it guide you. And that would is what will help you to really become successful. So that's it about that. Thanks for watching us. Um, if you have not enrolled in our courses and you would want to enroll and study, you can head on to our website at insurapremium.com. Let's see if I can pull that up a little bit. That's our website, insurapremium.com. And then you can enroll in a course to join us. We are starting our lectures today, public sector today, and uh, we're going to be going in the next few weeks as we prepare for the examination. Or you can also download the mobile application on the Google Play Store or the App Store to be able to get access to the content and then steady so that we can assist you to pass the examination. So thanks for watching. I'll catch you again on Wednesday as we continue with our discussion. And let's see how we can really help you hold your hands, provide you with some tips, and also take you through a couple of key topics in various subjects so that you can position yourself to ultimately pass the examination. Have a great week, and I'll catch you on Wednesday. Bye-bye.